Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are around this beautiful, amazing planet. Tonight, I have a beautiful special guest joining me tonight and her name is Mary Henderson. Mary is an international recognized personal brand specialist and social selling specialist. Mary helps service based entrepreneurs start up business owners and corporate executives commercialize their personal brand and digitize their knowledge into a scalable and profitable online business so they can become the authority in their niche. Welcome, Mary, to the Business Today Show. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. We were just talking about how life is these days. It's a bit chaotic, hey? It totally is. It's like, it just seems really weird that, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm such a touchy-feely person that I need to be around people. I need to be touching people, you know, and I find it really difficult just to be on Zoom. I mean, even though I'm on Zoom a lot, I do also like that separation from Zoom and physically meeting people. It's hardcore. It is. It's very hardcore. I'm yeah. very similar to you. I'm a huggy, you know, community <laughs> type of gal. You yeah. know, if somebody walks up to me like, hey, this is my friend Kelly. It's like, yeah. come here and give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I can see you doing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. I'm all, I'm all about that. And then they go, oh my gosh, boundaries, boundaries. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, boundaries. <laughs> too funny. Uh, it is too funny. <laughs> Um, so I connected with you last week. We've like had this massive big connection. Uh, I stalked you for a little bit and uh, saw your masterclass and you captivated me for 45 minutes. And I, like I said to you when we actually had a chat, uh, nobody captivates me for 45 minutes on social media. No one. I've never ever had anybody do it and you did. And I just thought this woman is got some stuff happening that no <laughs> and I really I really honor you for you know stepping out of your box and doing what you do it's really really you know awesome I love it thank you thank you well yeah. that's usually the response I get for, the, for my master class it's like nine out of ten people say exactly the same thing so I must be on the right path you must be doing something right let me tell See you right now exactly yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get started with the yeah. questions that I have um, so are you ready? Absolutely. I'm all yours. Okay, cool. So how did you get started in business? Well, I actually started my first startup in 2005. Um, and, you know, coming from a pretty full on corporate background in IT, you know, I was one of those people that went to university. I didn't finish my degree. I just really wanted to get my hands into some form of business or career for that matter. I didn't really think about having my own business when I was younger, but I wanted a career. And so around 2005, early 2005, I really, really knew that that was what I really wanted to do was just go down that path of running my own business, starting a business. And I did, I did that. I started my own software development company um, and we specialized in uh, building web-based uh, membership systems for the academic sector. And um, I had that business for seven years um, and then I then transitioned into a coaching consulting business. So this is my second startup, which I officially started in 2015. Wow. Like you use words sometimes. I like it just goes woo, straight over my head. Like, you know, those web designing and developing businesses and all that kind of stuff. So, so you, you, you're, you're not, um, this is not, this is familiar territory for you to be supporting people in their businesses because you've been there and you've, and you've seen a background information and knowledge that is really needed and it's critical absolutely and i think that you know you just hit a very important point and that is that you know uh i w i've been fortunate to be able to merge the three loves of my life which is sales uh building online you know membership systems or courses if you will and personal branding which is when I, I came face to face with personal branding in year 2000 and really started to unpack this idea around, well, what, how can I use this to be seen and be heard in the IT industry, given if it's a masculine industry? And so I started playing with all these ideas. Sales was really what, what, what I really loved. And then, of course, my, my web-based business. And, I, and then I realized, Kelly, that 
hang on a minute, if I merge these three loves of my life, I actually can solve a pretty serious problem in the marketplace, but also come from the angle of understanding how to position yourself as a brand, how to digitize your knowledge into an online course, and then how to sell using social media. And those three moving parts are a total solution. Whereas a lot of people sell one part of a solution. I've got the end to end, which is a huge difference. And also your, to your point, you know, you know, running my own businesses, you just learn through trial and tribulation. You know, there's, there were a lot of failures. There were a lot of successes. There was a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of feedback back that you get and you build on that as almost like your your filing system if you will and you once you start building that currency of knowledge it's really valuable yeah and so you you speak very passionately and very fluently about what you do and so that means you're like you you love this this is exactly what you were born to yeah. be doing okay so when did you know in your in on your journey that this was you this was this was you all over it this is such an important question, Kelly. This is probably the most important you know, answer that I can give anyone listening to this today. I didn't realise that this was my vocation until I... Uh, so my second son was born in 2011. I still had my, obviously, my company, my software development company. Three hours after he was born, I realised that I'm never going to go back to my own company. I just knew that that's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. And two weeks after that, I actually resigned from my own company and my accountant was like, uh, okay, well, what do we do with this business that you've built from zero to seven figures? Like what, how, what, what do you, what do you expect us to do? And I said, I don't know, just figure out a solution because I need to really find myself. And I was at the lowest point in my life. I was super depressed and it wasn't about being having postnatal depression. It was not that this was actually me coming face to face with the absolute truth of why I started that business. And I started that business because I was looking for validation. I wanted my parents to say to me, Hey, we're so proud of you, Mary, even though you didn't finish your degree. Yeah. And I knew there and then, Kelly, that, that's, that this path was not for me. There were aspects of that business that I loved, but there were many aspects that I couldn't cope with. It just wasn't me. That was not my natural state. So fast forward, 2012 in January, I decided I merged my business with a creative agency. So that set me free, which was awesome. And then for 12 months, I literally, and when I say literally, I mean literally <laughs> gave up my physical world, like in, in, in all as capacities, credit cards, friends, social gatherings, family. I mean, full on. I shut the doors to the outside world because as far as I was concerned, I had to find who I was and what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, not what everyone else wanted me to do and be. And so... I had these three amazing mentors in a 12 month period that literally held, you know, held my hand. One of which was a, um, a professor in philosophy at Oxford university. And he literally changed, changed my life just in the, in, from the standpoint of when you step inside of yourself and you understand who you are at a cellular level, forget self-help books. This was not self-help. As my mentor said to me, he said, this is not Girl Scouts. This is pretty hardcore and you have to be ready. And I was ready. I really was ready. But throughout that 12 month period, what happened is that he taught me um, a process of um, just um, freehand writing. And through that process, we were looking for very specific patterns. And as I was writing and writing and writing, suddenly I started to realize, wow, when I was at the height of my career, all of these things were playing out. And when I was at the height of my personal life, all of these things were playing out. And then when I was at the lowest point of my life, all of these things were playing out. And in that 12 month period, Kelly, that's when I realized there are three things that I do really well that I love. And those three things would show up in my life when I was at my best, at the best version of myself. And it was then that I started to think, hang on a minute, maybe I've got something that nobody else actually has. Because to me, personal branding, oh, it was personal branding, like big deal. No one, everyone does it, don't they? You know, and then what I realized that no, they actually don't do it the way I do it. So I developed an entire algorithm based on that 12 month period with my mentor and writing all of this information and 
capturing that data and putting it on an Excel spreadsheet so I can actually see black on white, an actual algorithm that was appearing in front of my eyes. So we developed that into an actual real algorithm that I now use uh, for my clients. Um, I then looked at my entire methodology in terms of how do I get somebody from A to Z in the shortest time possible? It took me three years to design and develop my methodology and my frameworks. And then in 2015, that's when I realized this is what I'm here to do. And here I am five years later, I'm still going stronger than ever. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But that internal process was really important, like huge. And I wouldn't be here today had I not made that decision to give all of that material stuff up and really unlearn everything that I had learned. I gave myself that time to start that process, which they, I'm still on that journey. Yeah, we'll always still be on that journey, Mary. Um, yeah. and we have we have we have very similar aspects of what we've done in our past because I took myself away for uh, I think nearly two years, and for twelve months I disconnected from absolutely everyone. Very similar to you, yeah. I actually I actually left the place of residence that I was living and, and moved to the country and just left everyone behind. It was just crazy. Amazing. But, you know, we have to do this to find ourselves, yeah. to know what we want, to know who we are, to be Absolutely. able to our purpose and our truth. And writing became a huge thing for me. So I can really relate to you. Really, I really relate to you. On Absolutely. Many- Absolutely. And a lot of people ask me that question. And, you know, and I do spend a lot of emphasis on, you know, talking about self-reflection and really stopping and smelling the roses. I mean, literally stopping and smelling the roses, which I do today, because that's where creativity actually lives. Creativity doesn't live on the hamster wheel or, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's that's not where creativity lives. That's, mm-hmm. that, is, that is just reactive, toxic um, behavior that we need to unlearn to really find out what it is that we we want to do for the rest of our life yeah and i couldn't agree more so in the midst of having your own company and and huge organization and stepping out of that and becoming a mom and getting to know yourself and then reinventing yourself and then forming algorithms and methodologies and all that kind of stuff what was the biggest struggle that you would have found out of all of that I think that the biggest struggle was that I suddenly um, realized that I was, you know, I was a version of what everyone else wanted me to be. So when I showed up as this version of Mary, it, there were a lot of people that were very uncomfortable around me. And I had to make a decision within myself that, that, that I would be okay with that, that I could not... Um, um, take responsibility for how others felt about the new version of me. And it wasn't the new version of me. It was actually the real version of me. And so, so my husband was really struggling with that, like really struggling with that. And, uh, you know, and, you know, even till this day, you know, he says, I, you are not the person I married. And I'm like, thank God, you know, I'm not that person. <laughs> like, wow. But, but, you know, but, you know, in a really beautiful way, but what I, what happened for me is that, I found a place in myself that was, that really was not, forget, I don't want to use the words powerful and empowering stuff like that, but I actually came to realize the subjective aspect of myself and the emotional aspect of myself and what that means for me, you know, based on, you know, just that, that, that period. And it really helped, really helped me understand how to separate from other people's stuff. But it also, you know, helped me understand that I am just so much more than the body I see in, in the mirror. And, and, and it's not stuff that you would learn in the self-help book, by the way. Like, this is really hardcore. Yeah. Um, you know, physiology, it's all about understanding what physiology means and understanding, you know, subjective. I did a quantum medicine for 12 months in that period as well, because I really wanted to understand who I was from all the different aspects of myself. That for me was, you know, huge because I, that application is what I use today. And it's funny, Kelly, you know, when people, when you meet people, and I'm sure you get this all the time, I'm sure that a lot of people that are listening will relate to this. Um, 
when people dump their version of spirituality or, you know, all this shenanigan stuff based on, you know, a Brene Brown book or, you know, a Eckhart Tolle book. That's not what I'm talking about here. That's all very nice and it's all beautiful and it's all, you know, soft and fluffy. I, I, I appreciate that. But where I'm coming from is a much deeper version of, you know, understanding yourself at a really, really core level. That for me changed the game. I can't express to you how much that changed for me um, because I see the world today with through a completely, completely different lens. And I think I spend more time outside of my brain than in my brain. Yeah. And um, that is the transformation in those aspects of getting to know who you are and getting to know yourself again is, is, is like you said, you can't really explain it unless you actually go through it. And, yes. um, and, and I can totally relate to that. Exactly. Yeah. So um, now that you know yourself, <laughs> what has been the best thing that you have done in your business for yourself? I think um, the best thing is that I'm really, really clear on my values, Kelly. This is a really important aspect of business. I'm super clear on my values. And the reason why I'm passionate about values is because it's my benchmark. Um, when I'm working with a client, I know who I want to work with and who I don't want to work with. And, and that's really empowering because when you can say no to somebody based on your values, you've made the right decision. Okay. Because to me, if you, if you, if you choose the wrong client, it becomes the client from hell. And I've, and I've had two of those you know, in the last five years. And that was just purely because, you know, I just took face value and I believed in what these people were saying, because typically I will not work with people if they're not experts or specialists in their field. You know, I do follow that 10,000 hour rule. Otherwise, you know, I'm working with people that want to become famous and I'm not interested in working in that space. I'm genuinely interested only in really, you know, supporting people, bring their, uh, their, 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 their specialization combined with their passion and what it is that they know for sure into an actual business um, so that they can become the authority in their industry or niche. That's what I really want to do. That's, that's, that's all I'm interested in. And so for me to be able to understand what your values are, it's very easy for me to say, I don't think that we're aligned. You know, we just could not work together and I'm not the right coach for you. And there, but there are, but I can recommend you to two or three who are perfect for you. That's, that's for me, probably the biggest thing that I've learned and to be comfortable with that. Yeah. 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 And, and you know what, that takes a lot of yeah. um, believing in yourself to know that you can actually uh, uh, attract the right people to you because now you believe that, you know, you are the best version of yourself and there's nobody else that does what you do. Exactly. And the thing is, Kelly, you know, I deliver results and I think that, you know, and it's not, you know, me being, I'm not an ego person. I, I deliver results. So, you know, I want to work with people who meet that benchmark because then I can help them. If they show up, I show up 500 times more than what they do because I get excited. You know, when I've got something to work with, I've got something to work with. If I've got nothing to work with, what am I working with? Air. I can't turn air into fame and fortune. It's not possible. But if yeah. I've got substance, I'm, I'm in my element, right? So that's why it's important, as you know, to your point, to have that courage to say no. And I think that's a very, 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 I think it takes a long time because so many people are desperate. They're like, I'll just take the sale. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm the opposite. I'm like, no, nah, no thanks. And I'm really cool about it. You know, I, I don't sell. I'm, you know, people get on calls with me. I do no selling at all. I allow people the opportunity to make the decision themselves. Yeah, That's yeah. the most powerful place you can be in. That's amazing. So our show is all about businesses supporting businesses and in a place of uh, where you are in your business, there's uh, people that start businesses and, and they struggle because they don't understand what businesses are because they love their passion, they know their purpose, but they're really shit at business. That's a background I come from. Uh, the next one is a business owner that's been in business for the last six to 12 months and they are 
uh, been headed in a, a direction um, and, their, and their business was heading in that direction, but then they've changed and, and, they, and they don't know how to revert that back through. What are some tips and tricks you could offer um, in, you know, support of these business owners that are, that are, are losing it? They've, they've steered in the wrong direction and they've, they've, they don't know what to do. Their hands yeah. are in their they're procrastinating, they're posting on social media, uh, blah, 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 and, and that's what's happening. Well, the first thing I want to say to anyone that's listening that has a business, regardless of whether it's bricks and mortar or whether you're a coach, consultant, whatever, okay, um, there's a lot of noise in the marketplace right now. You know, uh, even before COVID, we're, we're in this sea of white noise because everyone is an expert, everyone's a coach, everyone's a consultant, everyone's a startup, everyone's an entrepreneur. It's becoming really, really noisy. So therefore what are we buying? We're buying attention. So we have to start thinking about the idea of if I'm buying attention, then what do I need to do to stand out? Okay. So that's the very first starting point. A lot of business owners, Kelly, what they do is they focus on the lead or the sale, the lead and the sale and the lead and the sale. And when I'm talking to prospects, even the ones that are in business for 12 months, two years, 10 years. If I asked a question like, what do you do? And answer me in maximum five words. I promise you 98% of people I speak to cannot answer me in five words. Just can't do it. They'll give me a 45 minute version. They'll give me a 30 minute version, but cannot give me a five word version of what they do yeah. and that's important because if you can't articulate what you do in very simple language that a 12 year old could understand you are not going to generate leads sales and more importantly attention okay so our job as business owners is to is to tell the world i have a solution for your problem that's our job. And if you can't do that, then you will just be a part of the 650 million people on LinkedIn, the 3 billion people on Facebook, and the 1 billion people on Instagram. How do you penetrate through that noise? Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that we have to stop thinking that I can't put myself out there. You know, God forbid, you know, if my sister sees me or my friend sees me or my boss sees me, you know, what will they think of me? And my, my, my answer to that is, so what? Because if I don't put myself out there, let me assure you, nobody is going to be tapping on my shoulder and saying, hey, Mary, we think you're amazing. Come our way. We'll give you a million dollars worth of business. Nobody will do that, Kelly. I have to do that. I actually have to do that. So that's number two. And number three is, you know, we have to also uh, understand what, what, why are we on? So if you are on social media, why are you on social media? What is your objective? What are you trying to prove? What does your lane look like? What do you want people to know you for? Because what happens is people go on social media and they're all over the place. Now, someone like myself, I just lose attention really quickly. You know, I just, I can't cope with that type of content that's going nowhere. And, and I always say to my clients, you know, when you're on social media, just think that I'm, you've got someone like Mary saying, tell me something I don't know. Just tell me something I don't know. Just a little bit. I don't, want, I don't want the full methodology. I just want a taste. And that's what we've got to start doing to penetrate through that noise, which is why I'm so successful on LinkedIn is because I stick to my lane. I'm in that lane and I don't divert. And, you know, and so really, you know, we, we spoke about the masterclass, you know, before, but that masterclass has purpose. I want to show people, if you're starting at lead generation, you will fail. You've got to go back this way and figure out what it is that you do in five words, how you want the outside world to perceive you. Then you get into the next stage. And this is another thing that business owners must do is how do you digitize your knowledge into an online environment where you can scale your business? That's number two. That is critical today 
more now than ever before. And thank you, COVID has opened up that door because now we all are used to this notion of, you know, studying on or, you know, uh, coaching or uh, sharing knowledge online. It's become our normal, our default now, which is awesome. And then, then and only then can we move into the lead generation um, a part of, 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 you know, tying the whole business together. That's the advice that I would give people. Wow. That's such powerful advice. Thank you so much, Mary. And so okay. do you um, have anything else that you would love to share that has, you know, um, been an aha moment for you in your business journey other than what we've already spoken about? Like, you know, you're a mum, you're, you're a strong, strong woman and you have children and a husband. You know, how do you how do you cope with the time management and, and, and you know your- Kelly, that's an awesome question as well because you know a lot of people ask me this all the time and I don't have a job. I don't have a job. I don't have a vocation. I just love what I do. So, you you know, I'm the sort of person, I'll be up till one, two in the morning. You know, yesterday I've got clients in, all over the US. And yesterday I had an idea for one of my clients who's in Portland. I rang her and I said, we need to get on the phone. I've got to whiteboard this out with you. So I don't look at that as, oh my God, it's my precious time. I was in the zone in that moment and she needed that. Okay. That's so I I don't have a job. I just have creativity that flows through me 24 seven and I need to get that out of me. So I'm constantly, you know, on a high or, you know, I'm high, I'm a high energy person, as you can see just naturally. But the thing is that it's not about time management. It's just understanding your priorities. So I have a, you know, I'm a planner. I'm a real full on planner. You know, I have a, you know, I, wake up in the morning, I write write down all the tasks that I need to complete, you know, and I tick them off my list. That's how I get through my day. I have an assistant, I have a web team, you know, I've got a finance person. So I've got people around me that, you know, that I delegate to. I don't do my own copy. I get people to write it for me. You know, I don't do all of my, you know, creative, uh, you know, uh, uh, posts on Instagram. I've got an assistant that does that for me. You know, there are aspects of my business that I control. For example, nobody touches LinkedIn except me. But there are other things that I can delegate. Um, You know, I have a support system for my children. So I've got things in place that help me become the best version of myself. And, and, And it doesn't, it's not about having the money. It's about being smart and actually waking up in the morning and figuring out these are the 10 things I have to complete today. Now, when I write that task list, I don't do those tasks in a nine to five time frame. For me, it's when they're done. It could be 11 o'clock, nine o'clock, three o'clock in the morning when they're done. That's, yeah. that's my whole attitude. And, and the other thing, Kelly, and if I may, you know, just another minute, if you, if you, if I can just mention this, is, right. that, is that I also am really, really passionate about my circle of influence. Okay. So I will not allow anyone in my circle of influence if they can't, if I, first of all, if I can't serve them and second of all, if they can't take me closer to my goal, this is a really important, you know, if if you're going to take anything out of this call, this is it. You know, I really, really, am. that's why I have a task list. My day, I will look at my task and I will ask myself at the end of the day when I'm journaling, I journal every night, did I, all the things that I did today, did they get me closer to my goal or further away from my goal? Did all the people that I speak to today, did they get me further away from my goal or closer to my goal? Anyone that didn't get me one step closer to my goal, they're out. It's as simple as that. And I know that that sounds selfish. I know it sounds black and white and I don't care. And the reason I don't care is because I spent too many years worrying about what everyone else was going to say. And there's the line. So if you're not going to help me, I'm not going to help you. It's as simple as that. So my goals are precious. They're really precious. And they have so much currency and meaning to me and my family that I will not allow anything or anyone to get in my way so that I can achieve those goals. All for, in all areas of my life, spiritual, relationship, family, everything. And that's the most important part of our day is to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, 
I achieved so much today that got me one step closer to my goal. Absolutely outstanding. And now while we're talking about goals and, and, and you know, just sharing all of you, what is one of your favourite affirmations? Um, oh my God. Well, I've got, I've got a couple here on my wall. I've got one right in front of me that says I win every time. It's staring right in front of me and to the right of me. And I love this and I'm not a religious person, but I, but I have on the right of me, I can change water into wine. Nice. I just love that. I don't know why. I just love it so much. I absolutely love that. So, and I look at it every morning when I walk in, I'm looking at it now and it's, I can change water into wine. Yeah, I can. Absolutely. So they're my two. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Now, where can people find you, Mary H Henderson? So uh, Mary at MaryHendersonCoaching.com is my email. My website is MaryHendersonCoaching.com. And of course, LinkedIn, uh, Mary Henderson Coaching with a pink circle around my face. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. They're the three destinations. Yay. Well, thank you so much for joining uh, me tonight on the thank Business you. Today show. Um, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, being and seeing you on, um, on LinkedIn and your weekly magazine. Absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. No, I appreciate you too. Thank you so much.